Hey everybody, and welcome back to Plastic Models by a Regular Dude. And part number six of the Hasegawa 148 scale F6F-3 Hellcat. All right, so last time we left off, I had all the construction done. Everything was ship shape. Everything was masked that needed to be masked and uh, pretty much ready for um, primer. So I did the primer. You've seen me do that on some other parts, so there's no need to go through that again. So I tested a little bit of paint. So here is the paint that I'm going to be using for the lower color, and it is H74 Duck Egg Green. Now this is my first time using uh, Mr. Hobby Aqueous paint, so you get to see me either do well or choke. So I've already sampled it a little bit already on here, and uh, I have to say so far, seems to be pretty good stuff. In my quest for using non-toxic paints, but yet possibly not having to mix so much paint like I have to do with Tamiya, I thought I'd give these things a try. They've been kind of hard to find in the States up to this point, but uh, a couple of my normal online hobby retailers now have it in stock. So I thought I'd give it a go. So, the small parts are painted, so let's flip it over and paint some of the bottom. So I am using the aqueous paint and the Hobby Color number 400 thinner, which is an acrylic thinner. And I'm thinking it might be similar to um, the Tamiya X20A. It smells a little bit different, but I think it's pretty much the same stuff. Or close to it you know something similar so let's give this uh, part right here a shot I'm using a 50 50 mix which is usually what I do until I run out like just now <clears throat> All right, let's give this a shot again. Spraying this about 16 PSI. Just building it up. big uh, test here Let's see if I get a tip dry with this which I don't think I'm going to it reminds me a lot of to me a paint which is a good thing but a better thing is the fact that it comes in lots of colors and a lot of the manufacturers use their color numbers for their paint callouts, which takes some guesswork out of it. Because uh, the only <clears throat> manufacturers that, that I know of or the only manufacturer that uses Tamiya paint callouts is Tamiya on their kits. They don't use anybody else's. Sometimes messing around with uh, what do you call uh, conversion charts and stuff like that can be kind of a pain. So, so far, so good. That looks really good. So, I'm going to let that dry for a bit. 
I'll probably layer up layer it up a little bit more so now that I kind of know how it works I'm going to mix up a batch of the color for the bottom of this and uh, in a bigger quantity <clears throat> so I can add it as needed and um, continue on with the uh, with the lower fuselage all right so I'll come back in a bit all right so I got the <clears throat> bottom color down which is the duck egg green and I have to say that the uh, aqueous paint is splendidly phenomenal I don't know if that's correct grammar but it is so the next thing I need to do is I need to uh, mask off the bottom so I can start spraying the camouflage on top so here is the plan. What I did is I went on Edward's um, site and looked up their uh, um, Hellcat kit because they usually they post their instructions and color scheme things online and made a copy. Now it's obviously different markings, but it seems as if their uh, um, the layouts, regardless, were as far as the actual two color camo up top were um, consistent across the board. So what I did is I made a copy, I took a pen and I outlined um, so I'd have nice delineation on the actual copies I made. And then using a copier, uh, I, scale, I printed, printed them on my printer and then I used the copier to scale them up. And uh, they look pretty close. As you can see here, that's pretty, pretty good. Wow, stellar. So anyway, um, I did that, did the line on there as well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this as a template to cut out my um, camouflage demarcation. So the first thing I need to do is I'm going to spray the first color, which is This dark sea gray, uh, I'm going to spray that one first because it's a little bit lighter than the olive drab that's going to go over top of that. It looks like after I mix them up, I'll see, but I'll put the lighter color down on first and then I'll tape off the other. But I need to delineate along the bottom, get that separated so I can paint the top. <clears throat> so what I'll do is I'll just use this as a template and I will um, cut it out along that line and then lay out some tape and transfer that pattern and then cut it with a knife, stick it on the plane, good to go. And any, anywhere I need to fill in, I can fill in. So I'm going to cut this out first, this side here, and then uh, transfer it to tape. So after cutting this piece out here, put it in place, then I got a piece of the narrow Tamiya tape, uh, lined it up there, and then gently curved it up under the back of the wing here, slightly curved, just like the illustration, and uh, that's that. So then I can put more tape underneath if I need to for extra protection, but that'll get that. So now I need to do the other side, the back here and the front here. All right, so the first color I'm going to paint is the dark sea gray. Got it all mixed up and ready to go. So let us begin. Okay, so now that the dark sea gray has been applied, I need to start cutting out the templates for the camo. So I've determined which ones are the ones that need to be uh, taped on. So any of the ones with the squiggles are the ones that are going to be tape. So using this and these, I will cut the templates out, start cutting the tape, and then start applying it. Now I'll have to use some creativity going from this surface to this surface 
since there is uh, angles, you know, going from a flat surface to a vertical surface. So I'll kind of show you how I do that once I get some of this stuff cut out. <clears throat> okay, just as a quick demonstration here, what I do is I uh, lay out some to me, a masking tape, the uh, what's that, 18 mil wide, because that's what I have. And then I use the parts that I cut out, and I layer them in a way that when I peel it up, the, the segments won't come apart. And then uh, I trace it all out. Then I cut it like this and this is what I end up with so then I simply peel up the side and then eyeballing the illustrations or the illustration I put it in place. So let's get this back here first. And I cut it so it lines up with the wing edge. So it makes it a little bit easier to uh, place. And here's an important thing to remember. Put it on the correct wing. <laughs> Man, oh shnikes. So this goes here. Now, if it doesn't overlap enough, it's no big deal because it can be filled in with uh, extra tape. Oddly enough, during my search for a good uh, template to make these there are companies that actually make self-adhesive camo patterns for these things but me being me I'd rather make them myself I like the challenge Okay, so just push it into place. And because the um, and that could be straightened out a little bit. Oh, you know what? Since I know where this fits back here, I can actually start back there this time and I'll line it up. I try, whoops, I try and line it up with the longest piece of straight edge that I have. Like that. There we go. Like that. Now these parts here that don't quite overlap, I'll just use some extra, um, I'll use some extra needs to come this way a little bit so let me monkey around with this I don't want to waste a lot of time on the camera but you get the idea I just keep repositioning it until it's where it needs to be so now I got it where I want it but as you can see on the front edges here I need to uh, extend it down so I will do that with some extra tape like this and I'll just follow the same angle so I don't have like a little weird hump thing going on like that so I'll fill in there and I'll do the same thing over here all right, and here it is, ready for paint. So, 
I'll clean up my desk here a little bit and then get some paint ready. Start spraying the next camouflage. All right, after much peeling of tape, here is what I've got. So the next thing to work on is um, decals. So I'm gonna wait till the next video to do that. <clears throat> All right, jumping forward a little bit here. Um, I've got this ready for paint with a little drop right there, which I need to remove. Which makes me quite sad because I didn't want that there. So I'm probably gonna have to touch that up. Rats. Oh no, that's where the white paint's going anyway. Whew. Uh, so anyway, <clears throat> what I did is um, I was going to use these decals, but I have to paint some other white stuff on here, and I really didn't want to have to try and mix this color. So I decided to go ahead and use this as a template to measure and um, make my own masks. So what I did is I did just that. As you can see on the sides there, I just measured it out, cut it out with a uh, X-Acto knife, used my handy dandy circle cutter here to make those. And once I get all of this painted white that needs to be white, I let it dry, then I can um, replace the center dot and I've saved my circles so I can put the biggest part in first, put the small dot in the middle, then peel the big part off, leaving the dot. So then all I have to do is paint the blue. Everything else I'll have taped off. So I've already got my paint mixed up. I'm using Tamiya um, X2 gloss. And the reason I'm using gloss is because I want it to be, I don't want it to be dead flat just for the weathering purposes. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that sprayed and then come back and take a look. All right, so what I'm doing here is I'm replacing the large part of the cutout. Then, taking the small dot, putting it back. That way I know it's centered. And then, I simply remove that. And I'm ready to do the insignia blue. So I'm gonna do that all the way around. Okay, so I got those set up and ready to go. I've got my little uh, bottle of paint here with that formula so I can do my insignia blue. So I'll be back. All right, after all the tape and everything being pulled off, except for here, cause I'm gonna be spraying some clears. This is what I've got turned out pretty good I must say I'm stoked with it being uh, handmade stencils or uh, masks and all so that's gonna end this part so next time when I come back I got a few little detail parts to paint and then um, can start with some weathering so as always thanks for watching plastic models by a regular dude and I will see you all next time <laughs>